Welcome, welcome back, people, whoever listened to me, whoever in the, yes. around the world. My name is Armando. This is Bomberos on Fire podcast. I'm here with a great friend uh, that looks sexy, as always. Um, <laughs> yes. His name is Ali. We worked together for a couple of years already, and uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. we with the master here of uh, EKGs and medical field. Uh, if you don't mind to introduce yourself. And, but before we do that, I want to say thank you to everyone who listened to me in actually Poland. I just recently came from Poland, uh, oh, Spain, nice. South America, uh, Orlando, uh, Puerto Rico, and everywhere around the world, including Morocco. I lost you. So, Ali, the floor is yours. All right, perfect. Yeah, so oh, my name is Ali. Now you got me back. Uh, you're back. All right. So, my name is Ali Sadegi, and um, yeah, I've been. Um, I'm back. I've been in. EMS for God. Um, let me see. My math, my math is not very good. That's why you know I got in the medical field. But um, yeah. So going on about fifteen years or so now. Yeah. Um, I have a special interest in EKGs and um, ECG interpretation, just because to me it's like a different language. You know, you can look at a piece of paper and it kind of talks to you. And um, yeah. So I'm here. I'm at home. Uh, my wife has taken the toddler out, but I still have like three animals in here. So if you guys hear anything, I apologize in advance. So I did feed the dog. I did feed the cat. So they should not be behind the door crying. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I feed mine too. So we should be good. Um, good. Just, just started. When, just, when you start EMS, what, what make you say, you know what? I want to be in the field, medical field, and I want to be a medic. I want to have EMS. What was that? It's an uh, Ohio. Do you want the real... All right. Do you want the real answer, like the real, true, hundred yes. percent true answer? Yes. No. Right. No. Yeah. No bullshit. All right. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I was actually just working like odd jobs here and there after high school. You know, um, uh, I worked. Go ahead and make all of your jokes about the, you know, about the stereotype. But I did work at a couple of gas stations, you know, 7-Elevens and such. And, um, and uh, yeah, 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 sure yeah. did, sure yeah, did. Be housekeeping, and, be housekeeping. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> hey, here you go. Yeah. And um, I was actually working, um, I was working with a very good friend of mine, a very good buddy of mine that um, had just bought a um, swimming pool, like cleaning and servicing business or whatever. And I was doing that for a while. And um, I just kind of, got tired of it you know and um so one day i'm just at home i'm hanging out with a good friend of mine jeff and uh, we're just having a couple of drinks and we're talking and i'm like you know what i'm tired of shit i gotta do something else i gotta do something different and um so some some kid some guy we went to high school with and i'm gonna tell you a name and you know this name but some kid you know he was like the nerdiest dorkiest guy in high school that like oh, nobody oh. nobody ever talked to nobody even looked at and um, he said, hey, you know what? Um, you know this kid that we used to go to school with, Andrew Simpson? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that guy. He's like, well, he's like yeah. doing like ambulance driving or something. And um, he seems to really like it. I was like, you know what? I can drive and I like ambulances. Fuck it. I can do this shit, you know? So so I, I called Andrew. Yeah. I doing that? Like drunk as shit. You know, I'm like, hey, hey, Andrew. And um, he's like, yeah. I was like, hey what is this ambulance driving business thing? I think I can do it. And um, he's like, well, you need to first go to EMT school and then you got to do paramedic school and this and that. I had no clue. I had no idea what any of it fucking meant. Nothing. Yeah, being an EMT, what is that? I have no idea. Wow. You know, whatever. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, he's like, yeah, so you have to do that. And literally the very next day, I woke up hungover as fuck. And um, I looked on Valencia's website, uh, Valencia West Campus. And um, there it was, EMT. So I signed up for it. And um, it wasn't until like my third, maybe fourth ride along as an EMT student when I was like, you know what? I'm kind of good at this shit, you know? And um, so, yeah, the wow. rest is history. Yeah, the rest is history. So I did the EMT school. And then, yeah. and then I went and got a, I got a job as an EMT, you know? And, um, and I got another truck. And I'm working, and my very first paramedic partner was actually um, a female partner. Love her to pieces, Lorena. And um, 
you know, the person in me kind of was like, I ain't be getting no orders from no woman, you know, like I gotta be a paramedic. So, <laughs> so yes. then I went to, yeah, I so then I went to, yeah, so then I went to paramedic school and then, then here we are, the rest is like truly history. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, you became one of the most famous or notorious EMS instructors, pro in Central Florida, about car cardiology. I have to give yeah, you that. Come mm -hmm. on, buddy. Come that's on, a, you need some clapping. There another, you go. Yeah, that's another funny story, go. by the way. Yeah. So, I don't know. Can yes, I talk about I it? I want to know. know I want to know that. Do you, do you, what, know how, you, can tell, you can tell whatever you want. Yeah, do you, do you want to know yes. like, where I started to get like, really good at ECGs and like, kind of focus on it? You know, um, so I have this thing about yes. me, and I'll have, I've always been like that my entire life. Um, if I get embarrassed, it's like the, it's the greatest motivation for me. You know, like um, the two greatest motivators in my life have always been money. And, um, and the second thing has been I, like, I, I hate the feeling of embarrassment. Like I hate being embarrassed. And um, so, so I was working as a paramedic now for some time, you know, and um, a very good friend of mine, a very, very close friend of mine who I respect greatly. Um, she's now actually a, a, a PA and she's doing great. And um, so she was in charge of training at the certain department where I was an employee at. And um, so in this place where I worked at at the time, um, we had protocol testing and, and, and just, just testing every six months or so, you know, just to kind of see where we are with our skills and our knowledge and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, she was, you know, in charge of setting this up for that certain time that we did this training. So I go in and as part of this training that we had, um, ECG interpretation was part of it. So there were like multiple ECGs. I can't, I can't remember how many now, like five or six, maybe 10. And you had to like do ECG interpretation as part of your assessment. And um, her and I were super tight and I had a lot of respect for her. She had a lot of respect for me. And um, she was in charge of that particular training. And um, I got the worst score out of everyone. Out of everyone that I worked with and I respected and all that, I had the absolute worst score. So I, was, I felt pretty, pretty damn embarrassed. Wow. And um, so I left that day. I left that training and I decided I was going to be the very best at, at, at reading ECG. That I was going to master it. So, so I have basically dedicated the past decade of my life to learning ECGs. So, yeah. Yes, and and it noticed. Yes, it, you know, because uh, when I don't understand ECG, I send it to you. Like, uh, here you go, buddy. This is all you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. just, uh, I'm trying to get it, but I have no idea. And you have, yeah. but it's it is cool to know that that uh, motivation was embarrassment. Like, yeah, well, I don't want to yeah. feel like shit. I need to be the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's what my dad used to cool. do to me. What, what do you recommend? Yeah. Yes. That's what really? my dad used to do to me. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid and I was being a brat, my dad would just beat my ass in front of everyone. So, <laughs> so I would just get embarrassed and not do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. People from outside the U.S., uh, you know that feeling. Yeah, yeah. Well, U.S. Mm -hmm. is uh, still PC in that aspect. Or, yeah, we, are, we came from mm -hmm. old school. A uh, different type of chancleta or sandal, but it still is a sandal. Sure, sure. Whatever you just said, yeah. <laughs> sure. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> so, I got a question. Or or what would you suggest, right? Let's say I'm a brand mm -hmm. new EMT or brand new medic to start, mm -hmm. you know, getting better. What do you suggest as a guy with experience on the field? It's a, it's a good question. And um, I think the very first and the most important thing is that you should care. You know, I have been a, I've been an educator for a long time, as you know, it, and, and, and I teach at all levels. Mm -hmm. And I've always said, I can make, I can teach anyone almost anything, but I can never teach people to care. You know, like, um, you, you, look at a, you look at a firehouse, right? Right, right? A certain firehouse somewhere. And, um, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you yeah. might come in, you, yeah. you might come. You might come in at work and you might you might walk into your station and and your lieutenant might look at you and say, Hey, Armando, 
go clean the bathrooms. They're disgusting. They look like shit, right? So your lieutenant can make you, can order you yeah. to do something, right? But your lieutenant can never make you care. You can, you, he, your lieutenant can never make it a situation where you walk into the station the very first thing in the morning and you look at the bathrooms and you're like, oh, they're disgusting. I'm going to be living here for the next 24 hours. Maybe I should clean them. You know? So the most absolute, yeah. most important thing, number one rule, number one way where you can get better is if you care. You know, and that's when you get better. You will learn, you will read, because listen, you, you asked me specifically about EMTs and paramedics, right? And I'm going to tell you this, when somebody dials 911, and I know your, your podcast, you know, people listen to all over the world. What, whatever the emergency activation phone number is in your part of the world, when, when a patient in distress call, calls, calls that emergency number and activates that emergency response number, you are the absolute very best they're going to get. They're not going to get a doctor. They're not going to get a surgeon. They're not going to get a PA. They're not going to get a nurse practitioner. They're going to get you. So you have to ask yourself, am I the best yeah. that I can be? And that right there didn't really click for me personally until I had to transport my own child emergency to a hospital, to a trauma center, and be his own paramedic. I don't care how much knowledge and experience you have. I don't care if you've been there, done it all, seen it all, or whatever. Nothing on the planet will ever, ever prepare you for being your own child's paramedic, transporting your own child to a trauma center. So yep. you will never get better. You'll never get better until you care. So that's the number one rule. You must care. You must want to be the best and the rest will follow. That's actually great advice for those who are starting or for those who have been in the field for a while and they lost that spark. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can always bring it back. It's just have to care. And uh, you and I, we fight with that in, in a certain department that we work. We, we try mm -hmm. to put people to care. You need to make yeah. that happen. And as an instructor, EMS instructor, what do you recommend to a brand new instructor? Hey, this is your class, teach it. What do you recommend mm -hmm. to that brand new guy that he said, you know, I think I know a little bit of EMS. I can teach it. I can pass the knowledge. But I got a, uh, I got a, a tough class, tough crowd, first time. Yeah. So you got to learn. You got to learn alongside of your students. You know, you don't know everything. This is a different world, you know, um, as an educator, right? Especially like, let's say you're a paramedic instructor, you might stand in front of the class and especially, it is just funny saying that the paramedic students are really good at this. EMTs, not so much, but paramedics, so good at this. The second you say something, they're like, duh, 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 duh. Google says this, right? They're so good at Googling shit nowadays. Kids are, you know? Yep. Back in my day, it wasn't like that even, you know. So as an educator, your number one your, num your number one goal should be that you have to know the topic you're going to teach. You have to research it. You have to educate yourself. And you have to learn alongside your students. If a student asks you, asks you a question that you're not sure about, you don't know the answer to, it is completely okay. The students will have a lot more respect for you if you just say, I'm not sure. I will look it up. I'll research it. I'll get back to you. Okay. Just to say, hey, let's look it up. Let's learn together. A student will always respect you a lot more if you do that versus come up with a bullshit answer that they're going to Google in two minutes and know that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because the second that happens, your credibility is yeah. yeah. Right? But, but here's the thing, though, right? Like, yep. like as, an as, an, as, an, as an educator, you have a responsibility. And that's how I look at it anyway, right? Because there are two types of students, right? There are type of students that will challenge you and look up the answer and say you fucked up and you're wrong. Or there are the students that will take your word for Bible. So now, if you said something that was wrong or inaccurate, yes. you fucked up the absolute number one rule of medicine, right? Which is do no harm, right? So mm -hmm. as an educator, my opinion, correct. My, my opinion is that you should always strive 
to be subject matter expert because that's what people look at you to be. But it's okay to take your time getting there as long as you're true to yourself and true to your students and you continue to educate yourself. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good advice. God damn, you should get a meme about it. <laughs> that was pretty good. It's, it's oh, what are you drinking, by the way? Those it's people that uh, are doing video. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Luna, oh, I it's told tea. So it's just tea. For those yeah, who can yeah, just yeah, listen yeah. in. Yeah, it's unsweetened tea. <laughs> I, I told you I wasn't going to do this sober. Oh, yes, unsweetened tea. Oh, it's horrible. I know. I don't know why. It's so fun. Um, That was actually good. And, and uh, I know that you have a company. And you go yeah. around the states or online, or you reach a lot mm -hmm. of people. Can you please explain me to so people know what is your company, where do people can find you, and what do you do? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, thanks for asking, actually. So, um, a little while ago, uh, you, a couple, yeah, yeah, love you. So, a couple of years ago, um, a very good friend of mine, actually, literally one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. Um, her name is Anika Padezwa. Um, her and I got together, and um, we came up with with this company called The Hardest. And um, it is um, it is kind of like a mm -hmm. play on the word artist, because ECG interpretation is an art. So heart, artist, hardest, right? So so yeah. So we came up with that, and um, yeah. So we do. Yeah, so we do ECG interpretation education um, at all levels. Um, so we do super basic, hey, I am an ECG, I'm an EKG tech. I need to learn where to put the leads to, we have classes where anesthesiologists have been in our class. Um, yesterday, actually, we had, a, um, we had an online Zoom lecture where we had an ER physician as well as as well as an EP. I mean, you talk about the very pinnacle of ECG interpretation. Oh. Yeah, so we had an EP in our class, and um, so we've done it at all levels. And um, so so yeah, so we do um, Zoom classes, we do EKG and ECG interpretations, uh, we do in person classes, um, and. We have some of our ECG um, lectures that are uh, that are recorded, so we also have those available for anyone who is interested through email. And um, some exciting news that I actually also received yesterday morning is that um, because we've kind of been dipping our toes in other things, and there is a local, there is a local yeah. fire rescue fire rescue department here in Central Florida that contacted me yesterday about um, putting on a cadaver lab training for them. So, so for them, oh. we're going to be doing, yeah, yeah. So for them, we're, we're going to be doing plural decompressions, innovations, IOs, and, um, and we have um, Dr. Daniel De Cesare, who is an emergency physician in Orange County, Florida, who is joining our team. And for them, she's going to be coming in and doing, um, um, gross anatomy class where we're gonna get uh we're gonna get a cadaver and she's going to open it up and just do a full on gross anatomy for these guys. So it's very very exciting stuff. That's pretty cool. That's actually yeah. great news. Um, congrats for that. That's that takes a lot. Takes a lot of things and uh, reputation build to get to that point. But I'm man, that's awesome. Hey, if you need somebody, I could be your assistant. I can speak hey. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, ECG interpretation now in Spanish. Oh, oh, in Espanol. Hey, could be a thing. Oh, hey, there is a big public. There is a big, this, uh, this divergent feel because I've been talking mm -hmm. to a lot of people from Mexico and Chile. As you know, I got, you know, my company that I teach outside the U.S., some fire yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah. skills, survival and writ. And I'm in talks with uh, Mexico, with Chile and Mexico, and there's a uh, mm -hmm. literally open field over there of people wanting to know about medicine and fire fire. That's awesome. So uh, I might go back again in, Ch mm -hmm. in Chile, I'm going to Chile mm -hmm. in Mexico. I don't know which one, but mm -hmm. I'm opening tipping toes my way into EMS for South America, and I think uh, it would be great to see what we can come out with. It's, and also Absolutely. in Germany, by the way. 
that that's kind of happening more. Uh, the German yeah. stuff that we talked about uh, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. So yes. yeah, you so might... uh, I, I think in uh, collaborating is the uh, uh, yeah, you know, South you know, America kind of interesting, feel. right? Because I, I think that. in many, many things, they're actually far ahead of yes. us here in the U.S. Just because in the U.S. we are so conservative. Still, so, it is always interesting with sometimes because you know sometimes I mean like I mean like that's first cardiology, which is what I'm into, and like any any oh, kind yes. of anything like that, they are just it feels like they're they're way ahead of us. You know, we're just so conservative here in the U.S. and it's very interesting for me when I when I get you know um, messages on social media. You know, because I have people, paramedics, Feedback. nurses, physicians, yeah. or whatever, that reach out to me on social media. And um, it's so interesting when they talk about these things with me. And I'm like, wow, you guys are like, you guys are way, way, way ahead of us. You know, like when I talk to people in Australia and they talk about how they have uh, point of care ultrasound in their ambulances. And I'm like, you guys are amazing. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, you know, oh, so shit. we yeah. barely have IV cathars. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah. So, yeah, you talk about people. Like, That's you crazy. Talk to people from, I know you talk to people in Australia or or like New Zealand, places like that. I mean, they're they're very, very, very forefront of these things, like cardiac care and ECGs and stuff like that. It's amazing. So yeah. Well, well, I, I was talking to a medic from Poland. And uh, he said they're going through three years of training, and they had 50 medications on the drug box, mm -hmm. but most of them are PO. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, interesting. And EKG knowledge is basic. It's basic. It is not as advanced as ours. Yeah, well, ours is um, so it all depends where you are in Europe, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, right? Like, ours is as advanced well, as 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 the individual, right? Like, I see yes. your education and understanding is pretty basic as well, right? Like, if you, we don't, I mean, I don't yes. know about you, but you, I don't know about you, but like, I talk to people where they're like, like, they talk about their 12 day ECG interpretation class in paramedic school where it was like one day, one day. No, you know, I had it, I went to, I went through Valencia and I had it for like, uh, a couple months. It was it was a long, no, long talking, and steady. No, I'm not about, it's nice you know, pace I'm not to learn. About cardiology. I'm not talking about cardiology in general. I'm not talking about rhythm interpretation, oh, cardiology, and just the twelve lead interpretation part of your cardiology. I talk to people where like there's this like one oh. day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Yeah. I, I I feel like I feel like yeah. um I feel like fire medicine is like everything else, right? You're a fireman. You're you are one of the best firemen I know, and I'm sure you didn't learn that in minimum standards, right? I mean, they're not even shy about it. They call it minimum yes. standards. Yeah. The very minimum things you need to know for a to, reason to be the very yes. first thing you show up Sometimes. as as a brand. <laughs> the very first thing you show up. The very first thing you show up as a as a firefighter. It doesn't mean you know that all the skills, all the tools, or anything. Going to fire academy and passing fire no, academy, no. the only thing, the only thing it means is that you're hireable or you're trainable. Yes, you got a certificate that right. says that you that you got the requirements by the state or whatever place you work, right. just to get higher, and then from then you go up. The same with par right. medicine. But all the things kind of. you know, yeah. and only things you know, all the little skills, all the little things that you know as a fireman about what i'm gonna i'm gonna be daring enough to say about 80 percent of that has been on you as a person to go and get that education and learn it on your own yeah yeah so paramedicine is 100%. the same thing right paramedicine is the same mm -hmm. exact thing you go to school they teach you the very yeah. minimum you need to know to pass a multiple choice test right and after that people's lives yeah. are in your hands so what happens with you is going to be how much, how how yes. good of a person you, you are going to be, how good of a paramedic you're going to be, how good of a provider you're going to be based on personal accountability and how much you're going to learn on your own. And how much do you care? Because that's another one. Which is, 
Number one rule, right? How much do you Number care? Number one rule. Number one rule. You there gotta you go. care. Psycho of life. Have to care. Yeah. Like fucking uh, <laughs> Lion, to that. Lion yeah. King, psycho of life. You gotta care. You gotta care. <laughs> How much do you yeah. care about your career? You gotta exactly. care. I agree with you. No matter which mm -hmm. country, no matter which language, you have to care to be better. Exactly. To be at least yeah. something better than whatever minimum standards. So just to uh, change a little bit of the subject, you know how it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The podcast that I, that I did, that I created, is more about mm -hmm. mental health and how we deal with that. First responders, mm -hmm. uh, from fire, fire medics to ER nurses, you name it. How do you deal with yeah. mental health? When you get stressed, when you want to pull your hair out, which you have a lot of hair, how do you mm -hmm. uh, deal with that? <laughs> well, you guys are like what I'm going to say. Because, you know, real men don't hey, talk about I'm, their feelings. I'm a free, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, in the place that we work, now I am one of the peer support team guys. So, hey, oh, all over. I'm here Anytime. to hold your hand and, and walk you through Anytime. the tunnel. Anytime I need a hug, <laughs> you're there. I'm here, and I'm 6'3", buddy, and 250. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, listen, I, um, oh, I shit. feel like, there you go. no, 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 hear me out, hear me out. I feel like one of the absolute yeah. most, hold on, let me get back. One of the best decisions I ever made in my life, literally, one of the absolute best decisions I ever did, and I'm a guy, I fucked up a lot. One of the best decisions I ever made was marry a woman who is not in the medical field. Because oh, explain, I get to come, explain that one. I, I get to come home and I don't have to talk about it. Because <laughs> true. Listen, yeah. Listen, uh, hear me out. <laughs> because because this is this goes I'm, against I'm, hey, this, I'm here for you. This goes, this goes against the norm, right? Like you gotta talk about it, right? You gotta get it out. You gotta talk about it. You gonna whatever, right? But but, but my, everybody my has a different way. No, 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 no. Listen, my wife and I've been different. together. We've been together fourteen years plus. And and yeah. So so I made this habit of leaving it at work. Okay. Leaving it at work, you know, like. When, when I leave work and I come home, nothing matters other than my wife and my child and letting the dog out because I hate cleaning piss off the floor. Yes. <laughs> right? So, you know you can train your dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, have you tried? You can try fucking yourself. Have you tried that? <laughs> yeah, I try. It's, it's hard, but I can try. <laughs> try once. So, <laughs> So yeah, yeah, like you know, I don't know. It's it's a little, it's it's odd, you know, because I feel like um yeah. different people, people, different people have different things to stick with them, right? The things that affect yes, you don't, don't affect me, or the things that affect me don't affect you, and and we're different human beings, you know. Not much affected me doing this job for the longest time. It really, truly didn't. You know, and I and and what I'm about to tell you sounds pretty cliche, but everything changed ever since I had my kid. You know, um, oh no, yeah, it's I really agree. It's, it's really the kid calls that get me. You know, like like adults, I can go out there, I can do the job, you know, and whatever. But it's the kid calls that get me, and mostly because when it comes to kids, you know, about ninety percent of the time. It's because it wasn't the kid's fault. It was like a, an adult's fault that something happened to a child. You know what I mean? Like, like those are the yes. ones that get. Oh yeah. You know. Um, and to answer your question completely, and like I've been trying to be completely honest because I know I know what you put in this, and I know what this means to you, and this is outside yeah. the window of you and I seeing each other at work and fucking around. To be honest with you, I probably don't deal with with my mental stuff that comes with work very well. You know, like yeah. I feel like I feel like the fact that I told you, hey, 
and I know you and I have been talking about this for months. And the fact that I told you, oh, hey, yeah. I wouldn't, months. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do this with you sober. That has something to do with it, right? Right. Yes. The fact oh, that, yeah. The fact that, that I yeah. actually have to be under the influence of some kind of substance to have this conversation with you about work has to mean something, you know. To to relax, um, to relax a little bit, just to ease that that wall that you built, build a wall. You try to ease yeah. a little bit. So it's not even that. That is the fact. And it's that, fine. Okay, I'm at home. I'm not at work. All that. But hey, I need to talk about work, so I'm not gonna do it sober. Fuck that. <laughs> Got it. No, no. You know. No, no. I so, I understand a lot because everybody have a different way to deal with mental health. I talk to people, as you know, psychologists, psychiatric chief from retired chief, sex coach. I mean, you name it. And uh, yeah. everybody has a different way. Somebody w go work out. Someone has uh, get into tantric sex. Somebody get into, uh, which is interesting. Somebody get into, uh, I don't know, reading a book or walking mm -hmm. or uh, work. Uh, so everybody has their own niche or thing to deal with mental health. The important thing to me is just to deal with it. Don't don't keep it inside you because I noticed and I seen it and it happened to me a little bit explodes and that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why uh five years ago i left one fire department to go to another one not for the money to be honest yeah. for my mental yeah. health i was at that breaking point that if i don't get out of that place i will be doing complete something different and my life will be changed completely way uh, who knows and my kids my kids literally saved me from from that a lot mm -hmm. i have to say they changed my the, my mindset completely rewired my brain and now i'm here yeah. talking about mental health <laughs> yeah. online no i get it so I, get it. I, I feel you i feel like with firefighters or um an ems you know I, I, men and women it doesn't matter men and women yes it's like we have matter. we have this we have this thing where we like we will not admit right we don't admit that yep. something bothers 100%. us we have to talk about something or, we have to have this persona of how oh, we're tough. We can deal with this. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's, it is. So, so some it people is. put a lot of things, a lot of walls on it, and they don't they don't want you to see their, this side. Oh, hey, I got a problem. I want to fix it. Mm -hmm. I'll fix it. But, like, yeah, I like always I learn that you stick to yourself. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. That's it. For me, the best thing to do has been leaving it at work and coming home and spending time with my kid and my wife, who doesn't work in the medical field. So I don't have to talk about it. I don't have to rethink it. I don't have to revisit it. We talk about other things. Exactly. You know, and for me, that's been a thing. Yeah. You know, like, and and I try. And honestly, I try to do the same thing at work. Like, nobody ever has a perfect home life, right? We all go through things. No. And and when you come to yes. work, you gotta do the same thing. You gotta leave your homework. You're gonna leave your home at home. I come to work now. You have a job to do. So I try to I try to balance yes. that. Do, am I always successful? No, not really. But I try my best. No. You know. Yeah. No. No. I agree. I agree. Uh, I have I have to juggle the same way, home, work, mm -hmm. and outside activities. Uh, yeah. And now that uh, we, we both have companies now, it is is juggling. Is to see how we mm -hmm. do how we manage time and, and effort and put time with the family time put putting effort to go on a hustle business or at work but uh uh yeah like for example i love um star wars and i love uh all that marvel shit i know mm -hmm. you love something really dear to your heart mm. yeah Ninja I'm in the room right now. I'm I... in the room. <laughs> you are in the room right now I got so, listen, so I, i'm curious about that shit when yeah. that fan started when when you started like, you know what i like ninja turtles and you went bro full head on into that shit 100 percent. you maximum yes. effort just like my friend yes. deadpool it's it's odd. I, I really don't know when it started right i i think it was like the 1980s when the original um cartoon came out and back the then you know um, was it 90s i don't know 90s, 80s, whatever the animation 
was. Maybe it was the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, growing up, I had a, I had a friend next door, and um, we were best friends. And um, Ninja Turtles came out. It was the Turtle Mania. And then I was always down at Hello because, you know, he was the Brainiac, you know. Yeah, and you look like it, was, too. And he was leaving out of that. Like, it just, it just took off. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. Um, you know, I had everything Ninja, I had everything Ninja Turtles. Backpack, jammies, underwear. Yes. Toothbrush. You name it, I had it. Yeah, you right? name it, I had it. Yeah. And, um, and it just never stopped. You know, it just kind of like, um, just, just Ninja Turtles. And, you know, it's really weird because, like, I grew up in a third world country. And, oh, right, um, right here, buddy. Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah, way so, here. So, yeah. so, you know, like, um, all the Ninja Turtles stuff and all that were expensive and this and that. And um, so when I grew up and I made my own money, um, I bought all these things. I wanted to, I bought all these things that I wanted as a kid that I couldn't, that I couldn't because my parents couldn't buy it for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so then before I knew it, you know, I have all these Ninja Turtles everywhere, you know? So um, <laughs> literally so everywhere, yeah. <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. So, that's, I love that's it. how it happened. I really don't know how it happened. It just did. It just did. I think we should do like uh in the next another episode, like a little uh, uh YouTube documentary I, video of your Ninja Turtles cave. You. And you back. There you go. I'm back. All right. There you go. But yeah, we should do like a little video documentary about your Ninja Turtle cave in some point. Because if you're the biggest no, Ninja Turtle fan in the world. Not today. Another day. Not today. Yeah, yeah, not today. The next episode. Another episode. Hey, this is, this yeah, is, I, this is a continuous I evolution. I am in the room, though. All... Yes, <laughs> which is cool. I think you're the first that I know. So who's your favorite Ninja Turtle now? In your, how Donatello. are you? 39? Uh, no matter what, Donatello. Well, yeah, Donatello. Yeah, because he was you're, always the brainiac. Oh, you're old. Well, you know? yeah. Yeah, never you're been old about, as I've never been about violence. You know, I've always been about... You know, a brain. So, so Donatello was always the brainiac one. You know, so yes. So he was my favorite. This yeah. is, yeah. So now, uh, this is a tough question. Do you like mm -hmm. the new Ninja Turtles movie, the Michael Bay style? The Michael Bay ones, Ooh. no. But the new, the new okay. animated one that just came out recently, I like that one. Mm -hmm. You like that? I one? thought it was a good take. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was a good take. You know. They, um, really? um, Jackie Chan played the part of Splinter. Oh no, shit! Yeah, yeah, and then there's oh, a that's part actually, where that's, like, that's good. yeah, there's a part where like Splinter has his own little like solo fighting all the foot ninjas and all the bad guys or whatever, and you're looking at them and you're like, "What? Oh, those are Jackie Chan moves. That's awesome." You know? Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that yeah, is that's actually pretty cool because cool. he got a different yeah. style of fighting than other action movie star, whatever. Yeah, he has his own unique style. Yeah, so he's like using the environment, the chair, this and that, whatever, doing Jackie yes. Chan things, and you're and you're looking at Splinter doing those things, and you're like, I know that's Jackie Chan. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's I, I awesome. recommend it. I recommend it. You recommend. Yeah. And what yeah. do you recommend to read? Because I know Ninja Turtles start as a manga. Go get me wrong, because I don't know Ninja Turtles history. Oof. What do you recommend to start reading? Because you're the expert, you're the subject matter expert, Ninja Turtles. Oof. Um, Oof. I got you. That is, yeah, <laughs> that is a big, big can of worms that you just opened up. Um, actually, as That's I'm fine. sitting here, let me, see. let me see, let me see, let me see. So a few years ago, they um. They released all of Ninja Turtles action book, uh, comic books in hard copies. And um, you can buy them. They're like six or seven little, uh, little books. And they're every oh single. God. I know. <laughs> I can keep telling them. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. They're like. Um, Every single Ninja Turtle comic ever came out. They put them all in the same collection. 
So you can buy like all these books and you can read every single oh, wow. TMNT comic that was ever released. So Oh shit, that's smart. If, yeah, if that's something you're into, you know. Yeah, that's not not cheap either. Probably not not that cheap. <laughs> it is listen, listen, listen. Yes. You only die once. You live every day, okay? That's true. So. YOLO. That's that's my <laughs> that's my motto. All the time. YOLO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome bro that's uh, i'm really happy about it that you can actually you have that uh yeah, yeah, i'm right into here, marvel and i know you are full into it i love it i'm I'm into like yeah. marvel stuff and some of the star wars i'm not a star wars fan you know with the i'm not that far but i'm more into marvel i mm -hmm. kind of don't like the new marvel movies after after what was it? Uh, the one with Thanos. I forgot. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a yeah. DC guy. Oh, so you have a rough time, rougher time. Mm. Than Marvel people. Yeah, right now it's oh. not good. Yeah. Oh, oh, the last uh, Flash movie was horrible. Yeah. 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 It's just because it's just because I like Batman. Well, the new Batman is great. The with the guy from um, Twilight. Yes, yes, that was good. That's good. And they're making a series with the penguin, and they're making another bad yeah, movie you, with that you, guy. Did you watch? Did you watch the new Joker? It's a great movie. You come in already? It was, it's already out. The second part. Oh no! It came a couple of years ago. But it's Walking oh, yeah, yeah. Phoenix playing the Joker. Yeah, I, amazing great movie. movie. Great movie. Yeah, even. Outside the comic book area, I mean, whatever, as a, as a movie, as a, as a piece of art, is amazing because it yeah. delves into mental health, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. And the second part is coming with Lady Gaga. Yes, she is um, Harley Quinn. Yes, spoiler, spoiler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh shit! Now I get canceled. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> uh, now you're fucked. <laughs> I'm blocked. And uh, I got a question. When you moved yeah. to the States? Um, so. Because you have I an moved, accent. I do have an accent. I know. I have an accent for sure. Um, no, you don't actually, have an accent. It's, that's another funny story. Like, the are full of funny stories. Um, Go for it. Yeah, so it was right before September 11th. And. Um, Shit. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I moved out. Um, it's funny. Uh, not September 11th is not funny, but. What I'm going to tell you is funny. Yes. So because I moved to um, a little town in Missouri called Blue Springs because my uncle lived there. And, um, and September 11 happened, right? And at the time, I, yeah. was, working at K I was working at Kentucky Fried Chicken. And um, <laughs> we're talking about Blue Springs, Missouri, right? Like people over there haven't seen people that look yes. like me. You know, there was like one Kmart in town, oh. one Walmart, one KFC, one Taco Bell, and the Sonic. Like that was the town, you know. And um, and like September 11 happened, right? And and like they, my manager at work came and said, "Hey, you're awesome. You're doing a good job, but um, we're gonna have you go home because it's not safe for you to be at work." You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um it didn't help that you know I was from the Middle East. I lived in Missouri, September 11 happened and I had a beard, you know. And um I didn't realize how bad oh. that was. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize how bad that was until I went to the airport. You know. <laughs> like to to fly oh, down for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, they're like cavity search. Oh. I'm like, yes, I'm in. Wait, what is that? Oh, so you got, you got the full treatment by TSA. Well, it wasn't TSA. It was something else at that moment, but yes. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so yeah, my that's God. When, yeah. So that's when I moved to the USA. Yeah. So I moved, I moved here in like, I don't know, like three or four months later, September 11th. Yeah, I was just a kid. I just turned 18, Gosh. I think. I may have yeah. been 17. I'm not sure. Wow, so you moved at 18. I moved here when I was 20, 21. Okay. Yeah, I... So, little I country known Venezuela with a lot of oil. 
Yeah. I knew nothing. So, I knew because you don't have an accent. English. I do. I do. People tell me all the time. I do. You don't have an accent. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Hold, hold your horses, buddy. I have an accent, <laughs> and I embrace it. Yeah. You don't have an accent. I do. So what? You but... took a class and shit without an accent? No, no, not at all. So, so. No. Funny story. I got another one. I got another one. I got another one. So, um, okay. go for it. So, go for it. So the way I learned English is um. So when I moved to the U.S., I knew I didn't know any English. I knew some. Like my name is Ali. That's a pencil. You know. Um, but Jerry Springer was like my favorite show to watch. And, um, so, <laughs> so I would put, I would put Jerry Springer as a Springer on and I would put like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I put like put on closed captioning and, um, any word that I didn't know the answer to, I had like multiple dictionaries in front of me and I would pause it or do whatever. And, um, I, I would look it up in dictionary. You know, and um, and my first job, um, I worked at KFC. Yeah, I, I worked at KFC, and um, and so my my manager, um, Janeth, um, her daughter also worked at that KFC. Her name is um, Melissa, and um, she super hot yeah. blonde. And I'm and I'm like, I gotta bang her, you know, and um, so. So she actually helped me learn English really quick, real fast. Oh, I you bet. Know. Yeah, that was a great motivator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, That's so, a great motivator. Yeah. <laughs> Money and disappointment, I guess. She helped you a lot. Oh, yeah, is it? Yeah. All right. Oh. Exactly. In this case, I'll I try was harder dis- next time. In this case, I was dis- disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the embarrassment yeah, teaches exactly. me a so lot. You have to try harder. <laughs> I told you, like my greatest manager is embarrassment, so that really helped. So, so do you took classes to remove your accent? Because you should no, have the no, accent. No, no. Hello, my friend. Uh, my name is Ali. Mm. Thank you. Come again, right? So what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You just came what? out like that. Just. Yeah. Oh, oh, you got you got a funny one. No shit. <laughs> Yeah, because so. when I came to the when I came to the U.S., I I came first to Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I spent some time in Tennessee and then went down to Florida. So when I come down came down to Florida, I imagine my accent thicker with a y'all Tennessee accent mix on it in Miami. It was fun. Yeah, my calle ocho, pitbull. Yep. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Now, though, now I'm this. Well, that makes sense because oh, you're really? the only ten I see. So you must have been in Tennessee. Exactly. I was. Yeah. I was uh, requested a lot because <laughs> mm-hmm. they don't see people like me that tall in Tennessee. Right. Right. So yeah, that was that was an experience. That was uh, also because I before I went to Tennessee, I was in the jungle of the freaking Amazon for six months, and then I went straight from the mm-hmm. jungle to Tennessee, just because nice. the timing, I guess. I was working as a, I was against a medic over there, and uh, went from jungle people that doesn't speak any Spanish, speak their own language, to hey y'all, really quick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, personally, Phil, like I have an accent. And I'm told by people that I do. I'm told by people that I don't. I don't, whatever. It is what it is. You know, I feel like it's, um, it depends on certain things. Like there are certain words that I cannot say, you know, whatever. Oh, like what? Um, Which one? I think there's a, there is a funny way that I say understand. Like understand. Understand. I don't Ooh, know. Oh, yeah, that's a rough I, one. My wife always makes fun of me, yeah. For the longest time, literally for the longest time, I could not say planetarium. Planetarium. Yeah, whatever. (laughs) Planetarium. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I have the same problem with my wife. Uh, She's, Mm. I say something worse. She's like, oh, you sound so cute. No, no, I sound stupid. I get it. I, I just need to know how to pronounce that shit. Thank you. Gracias. Yeah. <laughs> Planet, what am I planetarium. So, 
I'll know, make sure that we talk about. Now yes. that we talk about it, one of the like the worst experience, yeah. one of the worst experiences of my life was. Remember when I told you, like when I was in Missouri and September 11 happened, and I was working at KFC. Um, I was on the drive-through one day. Yeah. And um, and somebody came. You know, I have the speaker on or whatever. Ooh. You know, would you like white yeah, meat or yeah, dark yeah. meat, or whatever? And um, somebody came, comes in through the um, drive-through, and I guess um, they couldn't. I guess they couldn't understand me. You know, which is fine. I'm sure my my English was far worse back then. So then, like, she drove to the window, and like, I tried to help her, and she's like, "No, I need to speak to the manager." So I get a manager. And my manager comes, and she's like, oh, finally a human being I can talk to. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice lady. That's a beautiful yeah, yeah, lady. Yeah, yeah. God damn. Yeah. 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 So. yeah, I know that feeling, buddy. I, I do know that feeling 100%. And it, mm. it is it is part of the experience. That's part of the who we are. Make us who we are. Okay. Yeah. I think that's mm-hmm. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we can get away with more things talking because of the accent. I still, I still have a much better life here than I would have had where I was born. So, whatever. Oh, oh yeah, a hundred percent. I, bro, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not. Yes, this country is not perfect. This country have a lot of faults, a lot of things that could be better. But coming from where we come from, this is way better place to be. Yes. Hundred percent. Because yeah. imagine a guy from Middle East now teach EKG lessons to physicians and astrologists and uh, you name it online. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought about it? And work as a paramedic for over fifteen years, and yeah, it takes a lot, bro. That's 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 awesome. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. So before, because almost an hour. See, the time flies when we're talking. I told you it's flies. I know. An hour is yeah, well, like having real conversation, so, which is like it never happens. I know exactly. No, it happens. Well, we it happens outside the camera, outside the podcast. We talk like that yeah. a little bit, but not much. Also, because we work mm-hmm. in different uh, locations, so it's kind of hard to see each other, except yeah. for training. <laughs> and that's like, and that's like lots of fuck anyway. Mm-hmm. Regardless, sure. It's, uh, we we have different. Uh, I call it personalities, I guess. Kind, no, we have oh, similar, sure. similar but different. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best way so, to be. Hopefully, next time we do another podcast, yes, we can uh, um, do it in person and drinking some uh, vodka because I'm getting good at mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Poland taught me a lot of things. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried some uh, uh, cucumber but vodka. Vodka. That's what they call them. That's oh, a pronounce. That delicious. Vodka. That's oh, delicious. Bro. It's like fifty percent alcohol. Oh, it's it's Perfect. rough because uh, we went to a bar in the capital city in Warsaw. That happened by the time we record this episode. It happened like three days ago, a week ago, kind of. And um, we have a bunch of firemen from Poland. They say, "Hey, let's go and we can drink some vod- vodka." That's the Polish pronunciation. And uh, you know, and see see the culture, enjoy us. Oh, perfect. So I go there, go to the small bar, and the owner. Asked, no English. They say, "Hey, uh, I'm oh, I'm American. You know, come from the United States. It's a firefighter, blah blah." And he brings one vodka cucumber, and then another raspberry, and then keep bringing bottles. So they, bro, I'm not chill out. You wanna what? Rape me? The hell? I was nine shots deep, and I realized that I, I think it's too much. <laughs> so yeah. Listen, you know yeah. that provides. That's all that matters. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. After nine shots of vodka, I felt like I was in a Taken movie. You know, all the bad guys from East Europe. Like, oh, shit, where's Neil Neeson? I need someone to rescue me. <laughs> Before that. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, hey, know. listen. I've, hey, we need, I've to drank to we need to go to Germany. I've drank Cabellin here before, so whatever. I know what you're talking about. Oh. Yeah, we, we need to go to Germany. Oh, we'll make it happen. Yes. I know a guy who knows yes, it. Yeah. So, uh, oh, all right, perfect. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm not afraid of traveling. <laughs> Sounds good. I can go anywhere, anywhere. I learn. I learn 
Yeah, I learned that uh, to be an instructor, besides, you know, have the knowledge and uh, study your subject, you try to be the best. Sometimes you don't need to speak the language. You're, the way mm-hmm. you, is how you present, is how you do stuff. People will get yeah. it. Because I have to teach a bunch of Polish firemen and people from Brussels mm-hmm. how to do some techniques. And like, it, it was a challenge, but I got Google Translate and a speaker. Oh, man, this is great. So before we go, because it's almost an hour, and I know you have I stuff to you. do, and people after an hour. Once again. Just kind of winding down on the podcast. Oh. Once again. Ooh, look at that shot. Yeah. Oh, man. It was watered down. <laughs> God. There was some ice in there. It watered down. Too much ice. Too much ice. <laughs> Yeah, I fucked that uh, one up. Before we go, um, yeah, you no, you're great. I I like it. I like to talk like this. This is awesome. This this episode will be famous. You know that, right? You will be watched by a lot of people in our I hope area, so. probably. I hope so. Yeah. Me too. I'm glad I'm not. Me I'm too. Glad I'm not yeah. See, next time we gotta do it in person, and we gotta. You can clean that one. Together. That's awesome. Yes, we try. I hey, I try. But yeah, this thing, life, life happens. One, yeah, I know. So at life least we're doing happen. it, which is gr- it's great. And then we need to do another one with Simpson. Three of yes. us together. Mm-hmm. The guy who started me on the whole EMS thing. I agree. Yeah. The guy who we went to high school together. We went to high school together. He was just as nerdy so, in high school. Just the same really? thing. Except, yeah, yeah. Except he was like that with um, comic books. You know, he's a super nerdy mm-hmm. with medicine now. He was super nerdy okay. with, with comic oh. books then. That doesn't change that, that yeah. neither one of us ever got laid. So He's the same person. Yeah. Wow. So, before we go, mm-hmm. uh, I wanted to give you, I got a couple questions for you before we go. One, um, what do you think about the last run in Ninja Turtles? <laughs> Uh, I think it came out. Uh, what? <laughs> and second one. Um, this is a little more serious. What mm-hmm. advice you would give to uh somebody who's thinking about becoming a medic on EMT? So your first question, the last Ronin, I thought it was amazing. Um, I know what a lot of people don't know about the last Ronin is that um, Kevin Eastman and Peter Lear who are the uh, original creators of the Ninja Turtles, actually had the idea of for the last Ronin in the 80s and the 90s, and they just never did it, you know? So it just came out last year, last couple of years, oh. and it's been amazing. And there's going to be a second one, and there's going to be a last Ronin video game, and there's going to be, um, yeah, so a second series. Of the last Ronin, and for people who don't know what the last Ronin is, is um, last Ronin is a comic series by the original creators of the, the Ninja Turtles, where all of the turtles, including Master Splinter and Casey Jones, are dead, but only one of the turtles um, survives. I'm not going to tell you which one, but then yeah, and that one Ninja Turtle that survives out of the out of the four brothers goes to basically seek revenge. Um, so yeah, so last one is awesome. I own all every single one, every single um, issue of the comics, and I own all of the yeah. uh, all of the I figures bet. that they have released. Yeah. And um, your second question was, what advice do I have for somebody who is just signing up to be a new EMT or paramedic? Right? Yep. Was that the question? Okay. Um, that's a yeah. hard one, right? That's a hard one. Um, I feel like there was a time when when people would tell you, you know, don't get in this business, you know, because of money. Don't get in this business because you want to have a career. Get in this business because you want to save lives. All that. I feel like. It, that's changed a little bit nowadays, right? Um, I feel like, like, look at what happened yeah. during COVID. 
during COVID was a perfect example of, wow, look at all these people who are losing their jobs. Look at all these people who don't have job security or whatever. Guess who are all the people who got to keep their jobs? They were the EMTs, they were the paramedics, they were the nurses, right? So I yeah. feel like it's an amazing, I feel like it's an amazing career to get into. Um, I feel like uh, if you truly are a person who wants to make a difference, I feel like if you're truly a person who cares about what they do and wants to be married to their job, like a lot of us are, um, this is a great career to be in. Yeah, you know, um, you can start as an EMT, you can learn the art, and you can move on to be a paramedic, be a firefighter. Um, there's a lot to be done. There's a lot of money to be earned. There is um, great benefits. There is great retirement, um, especially in the U.S. And um, yeah. I think what we do, as far as EMTs, as far as paramedics, as far as the firefighters, has gone to a point where it's gone from a stepping stone kind of career to become a nurse, to do whatever, to, hey, we matter. What we do matters. And, and there are benefits that come with that. So my advice is, if this is what you want to do, it's easy to do. And it's easy to be really good at it, as long as you put the time and effort to do it. You know? Yeah, as long as you care. As long as you care. You gotta care. You have to care. You, you know? have to care. And uh was a little thing. Um that was great. Before before we go, uh where people can reach you or they can know about your company. If you don't mind to say oh, sure. the Instagram account, profile, whatever uh, you wanna say how how to do that. Yeah, yeah. So so our Instagram page is called um the hardest the and then heart is as the artist the hardest dot ekg and um so that's where you can find a lot of i mean and i mean a lot of free education all day every day and you know like my first my number one goal for starting this company for doing what i do was to provide free high quality education and we still do that every single day so you can find us at the hardest study kg on yeah. instagram.com and um, also my personal page on instagram which i put a lot of more stuff on um which is a l i r e z a s a d e g h i 2.0 at gmail or on or on instagram and uh, that's also my personal page but there are like interchangeable so if you find the instagram page for the hardest you'll find that one if you find that one you find the hardest but but yeah a lot of a lot of which what i like to call free high quality education available on there for everyone and, it, and it's great i you learn a lot people who don't know I, i go through that website once in a while i'm through that page and it's great you got great content not because you're my friend it's just because it's true you put actually quality content and that's all it matters That's to be honest, Suleiman. People, people gravitate to great stuff, and as long as you are yourself, people will go towards that. Mm -hmm. Which is good. And one last thing before we go, who do you recommend to be in the podcast besides Simpson? Besides him, because that, that's a <laughs> given already. You know, I'm going to tell you a person that you're not <laughs> even going to think about. You've never thought about this person. You don't think this person would do amazing on a podcast, but I know this person would be fantastic for your podcast. As for it, because this person, this particular person I'm thinking of, Ooh. has a lot of different um, views, a, a lot of different um, um, pers perspectives of this job that what that we do. And this person is moving on to do bigger, greater okay. things. This, this person has signed up for nursing school. They're going to do nursing school. They want to do all these things. And they've done this job for a long time at every level. Do you know who this is? Female? Yes. Or male? 
We start from there. Well, fuck. Yes. 2024. Yes, female. Yes, female. Yeah. Kind of five, four, five, <laughs> five, two blonde. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You got yeah. a bunch of kids and she's a great mom. She yeah. Got, I don't know yeah. how many kids. Seven, five, eight. I don't know. Well, Popping kids. Her husband still. Wait, wait. Oh, to to be fair. Huh. Her, her, yeah. Her and her husband still haven't figured out how babies are made. So to be fair. No, yeah, yeah. So, they, yeah don't, they don't have Netflix. Yeah. They don't have nothing. It's just a bed yeah, yeah. and a bunch of kids. Yeah, so I think Sarah would be a great host. All right. I will, I will, I will talk to her. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, so because you have a you have a young female. That would be done perfect. The job. Yeah, she's done the job as an EMT, as a paramedic, as a firefighter, yeah. as a woman in fire service, as a, as a mom. Which yes. is, you know what? Which is different you and I can, from our perspective. You and I can sit here and bullshit yes. around all we want. We're not mothers, you know. So, so she's done the job as a exactly. mother. She's re-educating herself now, going to nursing school, this and that. So I think she would be a great guest. School, you know. Yeah. So that's my opinion. That will be perfect. I will ask her, and hopefully, she say yes. Yeah. Oh, sweet. I will, I will take her. Awesome. And uh, yeah. thank you so much, Ali, for your time. I appreciate it. Of uh, I really enjoy this conversation. It's actually pretty good. I feel yeah. good, actually. I feel good about myself good. now. <laughs> good, good. good. I feel yeah, nice. It was fun. Um, really um, for those who listen now. to the podcast, good. See that? I'm a great peer support team already. Just put my name on it. Boom. Drop it like it's hot. I want to do it. <laughs> Listen, I want to it was an excuse to hold you, and now I have it. Oh, now you have it. Yeah, I have it. You're yeah, getting paid for it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting exactly. paid for that. Even better. Even better. <laughs> there you go. So uh, thank you. So Even better. Even better. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, bro, for your time. I know that uh, yeah, it's kind of late, course. but thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it a lot that we finally did it after months yeah. of talking it. And now yeah. uh, you should open your own podcast. I'm just saying that. You should say, it. and if you need anything, you know, you can tell me and I will send you information how to do it. And uh, I'll be hopefully one of the first uh, guests in your, on your podcast about whatever you want to talk. What should I talk about? I don't care. Okay, perfect. Hey, that's a great one, actually. Hey, What are you, you passionate about, it? about Bes besides, besides you EKGs? Besides EKGs. Yeah. What yeah. the fuck do you want? Great. You can talk about movies. You can talk about Ninja Turtles all day long. About football, things. real football, not the shit with helmets and, and vests. I love all of those things. There you go. Yeah. You like Roma? For some... I love Roma, yeah. There you go. So you can right talk about me. all that all day long. <laughs> I know. Okay. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> you should go. It's a great city, your... bro. Horrible, horrible driving, but great city. Anytime, bro. Never been. I need to Anytime. go. You should. You should go. Right, do a yeah. question. I am the first podcast that you have done. I am the first one, please. You yes? Are, you are. Some, some young lady, very nice young lady, um, actually reached out to me on Instagram a while ago, and I was supposed to give her some dates of when I could do a podcast with her, and I still haven't, and I feel terrible about it. But, but yeah, you are the one. You are the oh, first yeah, one. Yeah. No matter what happened, no matter how famous you get, no matter how big you get, I was the first. <laughs> I feel like there's a song about that, right? <laughs> somebody didn't somebody sing a song about Kim Kardashian? How they were the first? Well, I think Maybe? so. Or some country song. Somebody who no, sings no, no, country no. music has it was some a, shit like it that. Was a song I'm pretty sure somebody about, did it. It was about Kim Kardashian, and and that person was talking about how they were first before the whole. Hmm. Video came out about you know whatever. Oh, uh, the sex tape, the only way to yeah, be, yeah. be famous in the U.S. Text it too, but there was a whole song, there was a whole music video, whatever about how they were first. So, so awesome. I could be, yeah. I could be your me I'll put it as a pro as a background music. Yeah. Yes, you you're my foundation, and I'm the guy who uh, mm -hmm. did it to Kim. I'll be the first, mm -hmm. a first mm -hmm. bubble. Mm -hmm. Thank you, bro, so much. And uh, if everybody want to listen to us, more than welcome. Uh, like I said, go to see Heart uh, Artists. Please check them out the website, their Instagram. The program is great. And uh, see you later, guys. Thank you for listening. Bye.
Awesome.